The U.S. Army recently performed the first live fire testing with one of its prototypes 30mm cannon-armed Ripsaw M5 unmanned mini tanks, which are based on a series of vehicles that have likely seen more time on movie screens than on the range. Want to know more? Hey guys, welcome to our channel Alpha Tanks, where we tell you about military tanks, from the most famous World War II battle tanks to the most advanced battle tanks at present. So stay with us until the end of this video so you don't miss out on any of this information. But before we proceed, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of our amazing videos in the future. And let's begin! The service also displayed the vehicle's capacity to be controlled from a control station housed inside a modified Bradley fighting vehicle, emphasizing the future possibility of combining M5s with manned platforms. This type of faithful wingman function is one potential mission set that the Army has stated it is considering for the ripsaws or similar future designs that it has purchased as part of a larger attempt to expand the use of autonomous ground vehicles across the service. The live fire testing was carried out by personnel from two different components of the Army's Combat Capabilities Development Command, the Armament Center at Picatinny Arsenal in New Jersey and the Ground Vehicle System Center at the Detroit Arsenal in Michigan along with contractors from Booz Allen Hamilton. On July 30, the actual incident took place at Fort Dix in New Jersey. The Army Futures Command-led Next Generation Combat Vehicle Cross-Functional Team, in charge of all M5 testing as part of the Robotic Combat Vehicle Medium Program. There hasn't been any testing outside of the lab thus far, Mike Mira, an engineer with the Remote Weapons Branch at the Armament Center at Picatinny, said in a statement. We want to look at integrating a turret onto the platform, which was delivered as government-furnished equipment to the operation. The turrets, which are Protector RT-40 remote weapon stations, were supplied by Norwegian defense contractor Kongsberg for use on the M5s. The RT-40's primary armament is a 30mm XM813 automatic cannon with a 762x51mm M240 machine gun positioned coaxially. On either side are launchers for smoke grenades, which are intended to create defensive smoke screens surrounding the vehicle. The RT-40, formerly known as the MCT-30, features the same turrets as the Army's XM-1296 Stryker Dragoon 8x8 wheeled armored vehicles. In June, the service announced that it had chosen a different turret, supplied by Israeli defense contractor Raphael in collaboration with U.S. firm Pratt Miller, which is now a subsidiary of truck maker Oshkosh, to arm hundreds of other strikers as part of the medium caliber weapon system program. We're employing high speed cameras to examine platform, gun, and turret dynamics, Mira, an armament center engineer, revealed further about the recent Fort Dix testing. We have data gathering systems downrange that will capture dispersion information and we will analyze both the performance and quality of the overall integration to ensure expectations are met. Making sure this turret, which is quite huge in comparison to the rest of the M5, operates well on the vehicle is critical to the Army's overall concept for the RCVM. The service previously stated that the unmanned vehicle must have enough lethality to combat some Tier 1 threats, which include hostile vehicles armed with medium-caliber weapons, massive recoilless rifles, or multiple anti-tank guided missiles. The Ripsaw's builder, How and How Technologies, now a company of Textron, has previously praised the M5's capacity to carry a wide range of potentially heavy payloads without requiring substantial alterations to the vehicle's core architecture. Nobody has ever done that for the U.S. Army before, making it truly scalable, so you can say this mission set requirement is going to be we are going to need a payload of 6,000 pounds, it's going to need this suspension package, it's going to deliver this payload at this time, Mike Howe, Senior Vice President of Howe & Howe, told in a report in 2019 or it'll require a 1,000-pound remote weapon station system, which will employ the same chassis and suspension components with minor alterations and you can scale it down. In January 2020, the Army selected the M5 as the winner of the RCVM competition. It should be noted, however, that this was not the first time the Army tested ripsaw variants, including driver-optional ones. Examples also have appeared in a number of Hollywood blockbusters. The term M5 really refers to the fifth iteration of the ripsaw design, which has long been distinguished by its fast speed for a tracked vehicle. Early stripped-down versions were capable of reaching speeds of up to 65 miles per hour on upgraded roads. While the M5, and notably its weaponry, was the focus of the testing last week, it also demonstrated how the Army might field a fleet of RCVMs in the future. 
The guns were fired remotely on an unmanned mini-tank using a control station housed inside a mission-enabling technologies demonstrator vehicle. The MET-D is a modified Bradley fighting vehicle that serves as a mobile control center for unmanned ground vehicles. Previous Army experiments have shown that troops aboard the MET-D could manage two other unmanned vehicles, modified M113 armored personnel carriers, and that the trio could operate as a single squad. The MET-D also boasts a suite of enhanced communications and data-sharing capabilities, as well as cameras positioned around the hull to boost situational awareness. These are all prototypes, said Christian Barra, a GVSC test engineer for the RCVM and MET-D programs, following the Fort Dix tests. This is the only system we've built in which we have a cannon of this caliber installed on a robot, a wholly unmanned robot, and that is also commanded from a different location or within the manned combat vehicle. It's certainly unique. As of now, the Army anticipates the RCVMs to operate under the direct control of human personnel, with the possibility of growing autonomous capabilities as time goes on. We're putting humans in danger, said Army Colonel Jeffrey Durand, project manager for maneuver combat systems at PEO Ground Combat Systems at the Detroit Arsenal. Although it's something we'd prefer to avoid, he continued, if the vehicle is destroyed, we're not losing soldiers, we can construct replacement vehicles. This last argument also applies to several aspects of the Army's larger unmanned ground vehicle programs. The RCVM is positioned in the middle of the Army's existing three-tier RCV plan. The service has stated that it wants this medium unmanned system to be durable as opposed to attritable, which refers to systems that are not, by design, expendable, but are inexpensive enough for commanders to feel more comfortable committing them to missions where the risk of losing them would preclude the use of a more exquisite platform. According to the Army, the RCV Lite, or RCVL, should be attritable. Last year, Pratt Miller and Qunetic Q's Expeditionary Modular Autonomous Vehicle won the RCVL competition. The service has yet to select a prototype design for the RCV Heavy, or RCVH, component, which is envisioned to be more akin to an unmanned light tank. Starting next year, the Army plans to integrate its ground fleet of autonomous ground vehicles into more normal training, which will only help the military improve its needs and create relevant tactics, techniques, and procedures for utilizing them. We're evaluating the weapons integration here, Mike Mira, the remote weapons branch engineer, said. The ultimate intention is to get them into the hands of soldiers and undertake some experimentation as a part of regular training program down at Fort Hood, Texas next summer. Overall, the ripsaw, with its action movie background, appears to be creeping closer and closer to actual battlefields. And that's it for today, guys. We sincerely hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please click on the like button and share it with your friends and family. If you have any questions or comments, please share them with us in the comments space below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see even more of our incredible videos. You can also check out our other videos that have been specially selected for you. We'll catch up in the next video.